Lastly, we are here for UFC 168, which takes place Saturday, December 28th at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tickets are on sale for this thing now. Buy them. Who's first? Raise your hand. They'll bring you a, a, a microphone. Me. Paula. Yeah, good morning. Brazil. My question, my first question is to Chris. Chris, in the poster of UFC 168, it says, leave no doubt. On the poster of UFC 168, it says, leave no doubt. In the UFC 168 poster, it says, to leave no doubts. Do you have any doubts? Uh, of, of course, everybody has doubts, you know, uh, it's about how you deal with those doubts. Um, I think that's one of those things that as you become a high level competitor, uh, you do a better job at, but it's normal to have doubts, it's just part of human nature. Doubts going to come in, it's about how you deal with them and uh, how to push them out of your mind and, and maintain that confidence and I'm very confident. And Anderson, what was the first thing that crossed your mind when Chris Weidman was announced as a new champion of UFC? That question again? That question again, the, once again, the same question. No, nothing crossed my mind, nothing. Good afternoon, here. My question's to Dana. Dana, I'd like to, Fiber from Commercial Radio, I'd like to ask you, Dana, for the UFC, what would be best for Anderson to win an idol, the best of all times, or to have Chris, a young guy, a US idol, for the, for the company, wh who's the best winner? Right that we have, uh, people ask, what would be better? Would, uh, would it be better if, if Junior Dos Santos uh, doesn't beat uh, Kane this next fight or Anderson? Whatever happens, happens. This is, this is reality. This is, you know, these two guys are going to go in there. One of the greatest of all time, broke every record in UFC history, uh, ha has been doing amazing things since he, since he came into the UFC. And this young guy, who comes out of nowhere, but who many fighters pick to win this fight before the fight, whoever wins, wins. It doesn't matter, you know, it's not like if, if this guy wins, it'll be great for the UFC. If that guy wins, it'll be great. It is what it is. We, we put together a competition between the best fighters in the world. They train and they go in and they fight one-on-one -on -one and whoever wins, wins. But Anderson, the Anderson. Anderson, this is the last title bout. Uh, if you lose, and if you lose, what will be your targets in the UFC? Well, this is not my last fight. Even if I lose, I will continue fighting in my weight class, and I'm not going to change my weight class until I get the title back. I've, I, I, wait, I want to close the nine fights I have with the belt. Anderson, here, where are you? Here, on your right-hand side, on your right-hand side. So Anderson, I'd like to know, do you regret anything in your last fight and what would you want to do different on the 28th of December? Regret? No, no. The only thing that I did, the only thing I did wrong was a technical mistake and I was making this mistake already in other fights. And it's something that hadn't been noticed because we were winning. So in this fight, when I made that same mistake, Chris used that moment just like I used the moments where I had with my other opponents because I studied all of them. And obviously he studied me a, a lot to know what mistake I was making. So that's what I'm going to change. Regarding the rest, I have no regret whatsoever. There's nothing I regret. So I have another question to Chris, please. Chris, I'd like to know the fact that Anderson is known as one of the biggest or probably the biggest fighter in this weight class. Is that a burden or do you just try to ignore that during your camp? Uh, it's, it's a burden that I you know, wanted to take on. He's the guy that I wanted to fight since I got into the sport four years ago. Uh, and then I finally got the opportunity to fight him, and I, and I won, and he's the guy I want to fight again. So it's not, a, it's not a burden, it's just one of those things. I want the toughest challenges out there. I want the guys who uh, people don't think anybody can beat. Uh, 
I just, that, that's what I want. You know, I want the toughest challenges. You only live once. I, have, I don't want any regrets. I want to test myself against the best. And I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity in the UFC to fight Anderson Silva. Oi. Oi. Hi, my name is Alini Black. I'd like to ask two questions. My first is to Dana. Dana, MMA is a sport which reinvents itself. The proof of this is now having women. So I'd like you to tell us a little about you, the way you see women in the uh, franchise and also tell us a little bit about The Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, uh, you know, many know already that I wasn't a big fan of, of women fighting in the UFC. And then I met Ronda Rousey and she changed all that. Uh, after I met her, I started to look at the 135 pound division and started to realize how much talent there was. And, and I, what I really started to realize is, you know, there's been an evolution in mixed martial arts, uh, you know, fr with the men and the women. And now that, that, that we brought them in, you know, Ronda Rousey's become a huge star in all of sports, not just our sport. <clears throat> and uh, the women's fights in that 135 pound division are some of the best fights of the night. And I, I actually really think women's MMA is, is, is gonna continue to thrive and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Anderson here. Which of these three moments were most important for you in your career so far? To become the champion in your weight class against Rich Franklin in 2006? To win, uh, to beat Chael Sonnen twice? Or this renewal that you've had after the knockout, this renewal as a fighter? The biggest moment in the UFC was my rematch against Rich Franklin. And it's funny to say that, but I'm living this moment now again, but on the other side now. So I'm imposing what Rich Franklin was living at that time. And it's complicated. It's not really that easy. But this was my biggest moment in the UFC history. Anderson, Juliana here. Hello, where are you? Oh, see you. So you said that you fought with 85% of your physical. No, 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 let's please not even, no, no, let's not talk about this. That's, that's done, that's a done deal. That's over, let's, let's just forget that. So I'd like to say, would you fight in that condition with John Jones? Or do you think you underestimated Chris? No, I didn't underestimate anyone. I made a technical mistake, a technical error, and I lost, and he used that moment against John Jones, I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. He has to talk to Glover. He has to talk to Glover. Just l forget me. And Chris, Chris, do you think this, uh, uh, this v the, the lo he's just a loser's excuse? Uh, no, I don't, I don't really look at it like that. You know, I think as fighters, we all go through tough times. Uh, my first fight in the UFC, I had a fractured rib going into it. Uh, you don't want to make excuses. You know, we decided to go uh, fight a fight. Um, you're never going to be 100%. That's just part of the sport. So if he did come out and he didn't, you know, I know he just said he had a fractured rib or whatever he, has, whatever they, he told you. It's the first time I'm really hearing it. Uh, you know, I give him props for coming out. Um, it's just one of those things. But I'm not, no, I don't think it's a loser excuse. He seems like he doesn't really want to talk about it, but. Uh. Anderson? Oi. Anderson here. My name is Camila. We are now live on the Teja portal. You're an athlete who's always used to winning. What can you tell us that this defeat, this loss brought to you as a lesson? I didn't think it's a lesson only for me. I think it's for a lot of people. I think no one, no one wants to lose in their life. We weren't born to lose. And especially the high-performance athletes. I consider myself a high-performance athlete, so I'm never, I never go to camp to lose, obviously not. But it wasn't the first time I lost in my life. I lost at other moments also, and others in which I couldn't lose for other reasons. So, so I saw this with a little bit more ease but yes, obviously, I didn't want to lose. But I, I was able to pass this in an easier manner. My mind's okay. I'm, I'm at ease. And that's it. And now, Chris. Chris, you said that uh, 
your camp, you were watching cartoons with your daughter to then go to, to practice. And what he said that. And how has your family participated now in your camp, now that you've grown, you've become world famous? Uh, well, I'm not in camp yet, so I'll let you know when I get in the camp. But um, <clears throat> they're just uh, extremely supportive. Uh, you know, my family's extremely supportive. Uh, I still got to do my the stuff at home. I still got to be a dad. So, you know, I, I, I've been, uh, in, during last camp, I was letting my wife sleep a little extra. I'd wake up early, take care of the kids, give them breakfast, um, watch some cartoons with my daughter and my son. Uh, but, you know, that's just part of life. You know, we're, we're fighters. We have a job to do. But, you know, we still have to take care of our, our business, you know. I'm just trying to get away from not doing as many dishes as uh, I used to do. <laughs> You know, I just, I think it's in my contract. No more, no more housework. Dana just told me that. So I'm good to go. No dishes, no taking out the garbage, uh, no vacuuming. Life is good. Hey, Anderson. Anderson here, please. Good afternoon. Lucas from Super Luther's website. You've told us sometimes during these press conferences about the mistake of your parallel feet, that you kept your feet parallel, and that was a big mistake that you had to work on. Would you tell now that working with your team, this was the only error you made, or is there anything else that the new Anderson will be working in your camp? There are a lot of things that we always work on. My coaches always tell me a lot of things that sometimes I don't really like to do, but those are the things that I really need to do the most, and that sometimes I, I avoid and going and doing uh, uh, tr fighting jiu-jitsu wearing gi and they, they always you know they tell me you're not a jiu-jitsu fighter you're not gonna fight jiu-jitsu you're gonna fight MMA so there are a lot of things that have to be corrected but it's my nature I like I like doing jiu-jitsu I do much more jiu-jitsu than anything else and this is probably one of my mistakes which I've also made um, and Chris Chris please Anderson has many times said of respect, that you deserve respect, that you have a new champion, that you have to be respected. So I'd like to know, do you consider that you were disrespected at any time as a champ, be it by the press, by the fans, since you got this title? That's the only thing I, that's the only thing I hear in my dreams at night. It's, it's very scary. <laughs> Thank you. Other than that, I'm good. And how's my, how's my Portuguese on that one? That was really good. <laughs> that was good. And Lucas Luch. Lucas, I've got two questions for Dana. Dana, the first, it's been some long time since we've seen you in, in Brazil. Will you be here in Baurudei next week and the, the next month? And the second question is, we've seen Anderson lose the belt. Ben Henderson lost. Uh, John Jones nearly lost the belt. What impact do you think it has for the UFC for jo JSP losing? For, for who losing? GSP, GSP. GSP losing. Yeah. Hendrick? What impact uh, can uh, the loss of GSP makes to the UFC? Yeah, I, I mean, it's part of the sport. I mean, you've got these guys who have, who have been, if you look at the top three pound for pound kings for a while now, you got uh, Anderson Silva, John Jones, and GSP. Um, you know, these guys are human beings. Things happen, and, and anything is possible. It, it's what builds legacies. It's what. Uh, makes fights exciting and what makes you know makes us all want to get together and watch Anderson Silva Chris Weidman too or Johnny Hendricks versus George St. Pierre um, it, it's part of the sport you know there's these guys who, who, who come in and, and blaze a trail and create these huge legacies and and watching them defend their title and and do their thing is, is part of the fun of it uh, you know it's it, you know uh, eight years ago it was Chuck Liddell Chuck Liddell held that title. People you always used to ask me, what's going to happen if Chuck Liddell ever loses the title and Chuck Liddell retires? You know, it's, it's part of sports, whether it's, it's uh, the UFC, soccer, football. You know, this, this is a, a young man's game. Anderson Silva, one of the things that makes him so amazing is how he has defied the odds of, of, uh, of time. Uh, 38 years old, and it's not like the fight with Chris Weidman. Anderson looked like... Oh no, he's he's too old. He still does things that other people can't do. He's he's an incredible fighter, on his feet on the ground, and it's just you know I keep saying it. At the end of this year, this season, this, this, the rest of this year is packed with great fights. When Chris Weidman and Anderson Silva are standing in those tunnels, getting ready to walk out, 
December 28th, and they get inside that octagon, and whether you're sitting here in Brazil watching it at home on TV, or you're there live in the arena, it's gonna be insane. I mean, this is just, this fight is so big and so exciting. It's, it's, it's the fight that I'm really excited for this year. I don't know if I answered your question. I went off there, but I, I apologize. Anderson. Anderson, my name is Ronald Arito from Fradesco Sports FM Radio. Hi, Anderson, how are you? Fine, thank you, and yourself? Anderson, a lot is said of what kind of Anderson Silva the fans ask, what, what Anderson Silva will we see in this rematch? You mentioned this technical mistake you made about your feet, but I think people want to know about your attitudes. Will people see Anderson very careful with his guard, or will you be provoking and playing around, goofing? What will you do? And then I'd like to ask Chris a question, please. So if I change the way I fight, I won't be myself. And before all of this fame, success, and being in the UFC, I always fought in that manner. So I can't change something which is me. It's my way of fighting. If you like it or not, I can't change. What I must change is my technical mistakes, but I'm not my fighting style. I've been looking at your career since back in the pride. I think at that time you were slightly more careful I don't think you were that provocative. At that time, I was younger, wasn't I? I was 19, 18 years old, so, you know. I didn't consider myself uh, like I am today, of being more experienced, etc. And over time, I changed my fighting style. And this fighting style brought me all the victories I've been able to obtain. So I can't change. I have to continue fighting in the way I fight and to always try to beat my opponents. Thank you. Good luck. And Chris, as this is a rematch, do you have any surprise or anything different that you're going to try to to get the second win? Or do you think you're just going to do the same thing you did in the first fight? Well, I doubt it's, it's going to be the same as the first fight as far as, you know, exact thing. But... Uh, uh, the only difference for this fight with me is, you know, um, I'm going to have more time to really, to really get better right now. Um, the last time at this point, I was still nursing an injury. So the b time I got into camp, it was really just to kind of get ring rust off and get in shape. Um, this time, I'm able to play with different things and, and do some, you know, things I've been wanting to do for a long time and get comfortable with it and sparring to where I'm going to be comfortable in the fight to do. So there's going to be some different things I do. Uh, yeah. Thank you. No problem. <coughs> My name is Jessica from MSN Portal. My question is to Chris. Chris, last year you came here to Brazil as a probable uh, person coming for the title. Now you come back as a champ. Did you feel any difference in the way the crowd reacted to you? And I'd also like to know what you think about uh, having been spent this time with Anderson during this tour. Yeah, huge, huge difference from last time I was here. Uh, I went, to, I went across the street to Cop Copacabana, right beach, and uh, to grab a burger, thinking, thinking it was going to be the same, same type of thing as last year. And then next thing I know, it, I'm playing an instrument, I'm in a band, and I'm getting, getting attacked in a good way, hugs, kisses. But yeah, I was mobbed, and I was like, holy smokes, damn! I'm like, I'm not recognized like that in New York at all, and I'm born, bred, never left there. So the popularity out here is absolutely insane, and I love it. Uh, and then the second question was, what do I think about hanging out then? You know, at first it was a little weird, you know, having to see him, uh, maybe the first time. And then after that, he's a, he's a cool dude. Uh, you know, it, it would have been awkward if we're trying to stare each other down and bumping each other in the hallways. But it's been just, you know, very cordial. You know, we're not trying to become best friends or anything like that. Uh, but we're, we're cool. I think we both respect, respect each other as people. So it's, 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 it's normal now. It's normal. <laughs> a question to Dana now. Dana, I don't know if you saw a video of the backstage of Mr. Olympia where Chael Sonnen and Vandele Silva nearly had a fight. I'd like to know what you think about that. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't shock me one bit. Um, uh, they don't like each other at all. They hate each other. <clears throat> and 
you know, I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, I stood here, what was it, a year and a half ago, with Anderson sitting here and Chael sitting here saying horrible things about this country and about the people and about him. You know, Brazilians do not like Chael Sonnen. Most Brazilians, anyway. Some like him, some don't. Um, I mean, there's situations in, 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 in the United States where there, we, we had a, uh, an event and a Brazilian fan started swinging at Chael Sonnen, trying to hit him. Then we did the, uh, the, uh, the big, uh, what is it we do? The Fan Expo, thank you. We did the Fan Expo and uh, a Brazilian tried to swing at him at the, at the, at the so Vanderlei's name is the ax murderer, okay? Uh, and he is a very proud Brazilian. He does not like Chael Sonnen and the thing doesn't surprise me one bit. People keep asking me if, the, if they're gonna be the coaches. I can't, I can't have a Brazilian within 10 feet of Chael Sonnen in America. Imagine bringing Chael Sonnen here for six weeks. Shoot. I don't think he'd make it. <laughs> I don't think he'd make it. Aqui, Anderson. Here, Anderson. Junior, my uh, program from Octagon in Santa Catarina. You talked about a renewal, a new Anderson Silver, but you're not going to change your style. What can people expect to see in the fight? <laughs> I'm going to train a lot to win, and that's what I'm going to promise to the Brazilian fans. That's what I'm going to promise more than every single time I went in before. Surprises? Oh, there's always a surprise. We always have a little card up our sleeves, don't we? We'll always do something. We'll do a little Brazilian trick. And Chris, Chris, you heard the, ooh, vai morrer, and then you won the fight. Many ask Spider, what did he feel at that moment? And what about you? After you saw people shouting, Ooh, vai morrer, and you won, what happened? What did you feel at that moment? I guess I was pretty pissed as soon as, I, uh, as, soon as the finish happened because obviously I think you guys seen my, uh, the close-up of my lips moving and what I was saying. But uh, after that, it was surreal. You know, it's a guy I wanted to fight for a long time. Um, it's, it's a dream that I wanted to become UFC champion and for it to all come to fruition. Uh, especially the way it did, it was a surreal feeling, and uh, you know it was a huge opportunity, and I and I took it and, and did something with it. Chris, here. Yep. Uh, what's the follow? -up? You said that you still haven't started your camp, and that there's a big difference in your camp from the first fight to this fight, because you have a lot of time to get ready, to get fit, and have no distractions, and now. Obviously, it's part of a game, but you ha obviously now have a lot of co commitments, such as pressers, UFC events, etc. Can that make can that be a problem in your preparation? Yeah, you know, it, ma it makes it tough, but uh, you know, after we're done with this, I'm pretty uh, pretty set on just working, working. You know, and right before we started this world tour, that's what I was doing. I was working. I've been taking time out of the gym. I've been uh, just getting better in every area of the game, and uh, you know, I'm not. I didn't become champion just to give this belt up, uh, to, uh, you know, to give this up. I'm here to stay for a long time. I'm here to begin my legacy, and uh, that's that's where my head is at. Um, and as far as m once I get in my camp, it's going to be the same type of uh, um, camp I had last time. There's some in Swiss. Anderson here on your left. I'd like to know: Have you already practiced, or have you do, have you been practicing the dehydration process? I have time to make weight. Naturally, I weigh 105 kilos, so I have to go back down to 84, so I have to have that time. So I have proper nutrition. I have a lot of time to make weight. When I get to the fights, I always get there four or five kilos above at the most, and I can lose that weight very easily. I don't wait I don't wait to lose weight on the last minute. So I really do believe that my team does everything in the best way. I've never had a problem in making weight. I think the biggest problem is for patient, for athletes to accept fights in the last minute and wait to cut weight in the last minute. No one can can do that. There's no way you can recover your weight from one day to the next. So that makes it very difficult. Dana, I have a question for you, Dana. 
do you think these athletes need like a medical follow-up to be able to make weight? Do you consider it dangerous to cut weight excessively? I do. Uh, cutting weight is, is a part of this business. It's a part of uh, combat sports, whether it's wrestling or boxing or mixed martial arts. And I agree 100% with what Anderson said. You know, where you see the dangerous situations are guys who take last minute fights and have to lose a ton of weight. It, it's never good. You know, in the UFC, these guys have plenty of time. They know when they have to, <clears throat> when they have to fight. They know what the, the, the time they have. They, they diet. They, they do the proper nutrition to get down the right way. And then as they get closer to what they do, they cut a few pounds. That's the healthy, normal way to do it. Um, I don't think that the, the, the cutting weight process is ever going to be perfect. But I said it today in, in an interview I did with, an, with a gentleman earlier. I don't care what level you fight on. No fight is worth dying over. You know, these guys who take diuretics and, and take all these different things to cut weight, it's, it's, it's crazy. If you can't make the weight, don't take the fight. There's going to be plenty of fights out there. Uh. My question's to Dana. Dana, I'd like to know what did you think that De Anderson said that he'd prefer to give up his title than to fight uh, Lyoto or Jacare. And what would you do if that in fact happened? if he actually refused to fight one of the two? Anderson Silva is an interesting man, you know? Uh, he, the, the, the things he says, these, these are people, when, when you get to know Anderson, Anderson cares about the guys that he trains with and everything else, but don't ever kid yourself on the type of competitor that he is. He, is a, he isn't where he is today because he's not a competitor. So when you ask questions about people that he's friends with and people that he respects, of course that's what he's going to say. But I truly believe myself when it comes down to it, you know, and let's say Leota Machida comes in at 85 pounds and, and Anderson Silva has the title and Leota Machida makes the decision that he wants his title, I think you will see the competitor and Anderson Silva come out and we'll see what happens. Can I talk now? Can I talk? I've already said it and I'll say it again. Lyoto and myself, we are brothers. Lyoto and myself. Jacare and myself, we are friends, camp friends. So we have a code of honor amongst ourselves, which is that we don't fight against ourselves, regardless of wins or losses or money, fame or not. So I would give up fighting if necessary, if I had to fight against Lyoto. Dana, we see many fighters fighting in events held in Brazil, fights as, uh, uh, you know, people like Ronnie Jason, Eric Silva, Sarafian. What is the chance of us seeing them fighting in UFC fights as outside of Brazil? Oh, you definitely will. Uh, you know, we, we, we've been, ever since we've come down here and started doing uh, fights in Brazil and doing fights on Globo and, and, and Combat Jay, we... Uh, we're in a very unique position where this thing is exploding. It's doing so well down here in Brazil because not only uh, are there so many fans of, of the UFC down here, but there's so much talent. Brazil has been rich with talent since before the UFC even started. And now with all the events that we're doing and, and the things we're doing here in Brazil, not only are these guys, when they fight here in Brazil, they're also being broadcast in the United States, in the UK, and in many countries around the world. So all these Brazilian fighters are getting the opportunity to, to fight and build a record, make money and make a living, and get noticed around the world. So it's not just here in the, and in, in, it feels like it's just here in Brazil because the events are happening, but they're being shown all over the world. And you heard yesterday how many events I want to do here next year. So um, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and, and more and more opportunities for uh, the talented fighters down here in Brazil. Okay. Um. My question's to Anderson, Nayara Figueiredo is my name. The crowd put a lot of pressure after your last loss. And now with this rematch, do you think the pressure from the crowd will be a problem? Or do you think it's something which will push you forward to win? I felt pressure only when my aunt used to scold me, you know? That was terrible when my aunt scolded me. When I got bad grades and I got home, she'd tell me, oh, if you don't do this, and the other. Nowadays, I don't feel pressure anymore. 
This guy here, look, he tries to push me sometimes, but he doesn't really manage. Hey, forever. <laughs> Ele me ganha no coração. He beats me in my heart. Dana, please. Based on what Anderson just said, he said he would fight Jacaré without a problem. No, I wouldn't fight Jacaré also. No, man, we're in camp. Would you hit your brother for money? So no, I won't do it. Come on, stop. Stop. Please. Come on, guys. I'm gonna say, if push comes to shove, we get there. We'll see what happens. Apesar disso, alguma possibility Despite this, is there any possibility of Ronaldo Jacaré and Vitor Belfort fighting each other? That's what I'm talking about. You see, that's it. Now, yes. Now that's cool. Burst onto the scene in his last fight. I mean, that that was. If you've ever, you know, for me personally too, you know, Jacaré has been great. He's been talented. Whatever. His win over Okami was huge. And, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's hurt right now. He's injured. So, he's, you know, as soon as he gets back from uh, being injured, there's some very interesting fights for him. And, and Vitor Belfort could be one of them, definitely. You also mentioned the fighters in Brazil, these younger fighters in Brazil, which are being broadcast to the whole world and that have make great cards in Brazil. Is it possibility of bringing... U.S. class, world-class fighters here to Brazil to fight against themselves. So, for example, uh, Dan Henderson and Rashad, uh, will they fight amongst themselves here in Brazil? Could, that, could we see that? Not exactly those two, but I mean, could we see two U.S. fighters fighting against each other here in Brazil? Absolutely. And one of the great things about, you know, the market here in Brazil and how strong the market is and how many fans there are and the list goes on and on is that the time difference isn't that bad. You know, we're like an hour ahead of the East Coast down here. Uh, so, so big fights do make sense down here in Brazil, whether it be not just Americans or people from other parts of the world versus Brazil, but yeah, some of the big stars, Americans versus Americans or whoever it might be, the big stars of the UFC. You know, the, the one thing that we've learned in Brazil in our short time down here is Brazilians do not like to see Brazilians fight other Brazilians. Uh, you guys like to see Brazilians dominate other parts of the world, but you're also mixed martial arts fans that want to see some of the big fights here in Brazil too. And it, the long-winded answer to this question is yes. Yes, we will bring those type of fights down here too. That was it, last question. Everybody good? Yeah? Okay. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming out today and participating. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to get some of this stuff out of here, and I'll square these guys off for some photo ops, okay? Thank you very much. We appreciate you.